Okay, we're back to number 11. So we started working on this yesterday. It didn't quite come to arrive at a solution here. Does anybody remember what we did yesterday with this? Yeah. We tried to like multiply it in some way. And just yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, yes. Uh -huh. So what it is, we, we multiplied by what we call the conjugate. Now if you, and what is a conjugate? It's like the same thing, but positive. Like the opposite of it. Yeah, so what we're going to do is, is uh, yeah, so Kylie's right about that. So we have here square root of x plus 2, and we're going to add here square root of 2, right? And we do the same thing in the denominator. And so what happens when we, when we multiply this together? What happens when we multiply this together? Yeah, so what happens is we got x plus 2, uh, square root of x plus 2 times square root of x plus 2. What is that going to be left with? X plus 2 minus 2. X plus 2. Yeah, and then we're going to be, we have minus 2 right here, right? And then down here, what we have is x times x, well, square root of, we have x times square root of x plus 2, and then plus 2, right? square root of 2, right? Okay, so now what hap What cancels out here? The two, 2 minus 2. And so here, now what do we have left? Limit as x approaches 0 of x over x times square root of x plus 2 plus square root of 2. What can we do here? Cancel out the x's. So we can go like this, right? So now we have, now we can substitute in 0 for x, can't we? So what do we have left here? Square root of 2 plus the square root of 2. Or 1 over, over, one over all that. square root of 2 plus square root of 2, which equals what? Two, 1 over 2 square root of 2. 1 over 2 square root of 2. And we could leave it there. Sometimes uh, if you rationalize it, you can multiply by square root of 2 over square root of 2. And so uh, well, what do we have left? Square root of 2 over 4. Square root of 2 over 4. Okay. So we end up, so basically yesterday, we started out right, but didn't. We didn't. We didn't, didn't cancel. cancel out the X's. Didn't cancel out the X's. So the, That's what we the solution was sitting right there in front of us. But okay, let's go on to. Uh, You're on twenty-four. Yeah, what I want to do is is go to these ones right here, twenty-six and twenty-seven. All right. Now. Here we have, what kind of function do we call this? It's a piecewise function. Piece, piecewise function. And how do we set up, how do we set up a limit? Do you like the limit of, like, going from the left and the limit going from the right? Yeah, okay, that's exactly what we do. So I want you to do that. I want you to do what Kylie said, all right? What kind of set it up? So, so do set this up. I will.
okay, does this does this make sense here? Yes. Okay. Well, to me, no. Yeah, to me, it it really doesn't because what what do we have here? Yeah. So we have so we have when x is not equal to two. So what do we really need? We already know that the limit is going to exist, right? We already know that. But, because the limit from the left and the right is, is going to be what? Won't it be the same? Since we have the same function for both the left and right? Yeah. So now we have to have but this limit here, which I've So limit is, what does that have to be equal to? What is f of 2? What is f of 2? What does it tell you here is f of 2? right here k minus 3 okay so when the limit actually equals this function here and how do we write this out here well we're going to go ahead and say how do we write the limit of this when x equals 2 what do we do with this thing here What do we do with this thing right here? Yes, Gavin, what do we do? Okay, let me ask you another way. Pardon me? You just slap it in there. Yeah, I don't see I don't see how fact I don't know if this is factorable, but I don't see how factoring would help us here. Okay. What would we do with this thing? What would the value of this <coughs> thing be? What would what would this thing be? How do we find that? Like plug, in two for plug in 2 for x, right? So let's do that. So we take in this 2 squared minus 2 times 2 minus 3, and that's going to be equal to k minus 3, right? Yes. And then if we go ahead and figure that out, so what do we have here on the left side? Negative. So we have 4 minus 4 minus 3, so we have negative 3 equals k minus 3, so k is equal to 0. Aha! So k is equal to 0, and then we can, we can test it out. Well, if we plug in 0 for k, well then we get negative 3, and negative 3 is what the value of this function is at x equals 2. So that's our answer, all right? Okay, that makes more sense. Yeah. So I want you to try a similar problem, 27.
Okay, you feel you, like you got somewhere on this one? I feel like I got there. You think you got there? Aaron does. Anybody else? Um, I feel like I'm getting there. I figured it out, like, I don't. Okay. So let's go. You're right. <laughs> okay, somebody, uh, t Aaron or somebody, tell me wh what did you do on this one? you got to use that difference of squares. Because if you plug in just 7 into that equation, you get like 0 over 0. Yeah, so you do that. And then, so if we take, uh, so Aaron is saying, correct me if I'm wrong, Aaron, so you say like x minus 7, x plus 7, over the x minus 7, over x minus 7, equals the k squared minus 2. So that, so you set that equal to k squared minus 2 because we're already given the condition that x cannot equal 7. So that means that this is permissible, right? So now we can take x minus 7. Well, we can instead rewrite this as the limit. So limit as x approaches 7 of x plus 7, right? Of x plus 7, that's going to be equal to this thing right here, k squared minus 2. Is that right? That's right. So now, if we plug in 7, we're going to get, what is that? 14, 14 equals k squared minus 2. Add 2. Add 2. So k squared equals 16. So what is k equal to? The square root of 16, which is 4. Anything else? Could it be positive and negative? Yeah, plus or minus 4. Okay, so k is going to be equal to plus or minus 4. Nice. Alright, is that what you got on the thing? I got it. Alright, very good. Me too. How did, how's everybody else? Did you figure? Gavin got it. Did you guys, did you guys, Hannah, Carson, you okay on this? I got it. You okay on it? Okay. All right. We're going to go on to, I'm going to see how it came up in there. Yeah, I think it came up in the corner there. Just trying to see what coverage we have for Maddie and for anybody else who should watch. Maddie. Okay, we're here to note card three. We're starting to note card three today, List, uh, limits and asymptotes. And we're going to particularly concentrate today on, on vertical asymptotes. Well, how is it that you get a... First of all, it says a horizontal line y equals b is a horizontal asymptote if one or both of the following limits exist. The limit as x approaches infinity of f of x equals b or limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x equals b. So it'll be the equation y equals b. And we're going to find those horizontal asymptotes analytically. That'll be on note card four. But here on note card three, we're going to concentrate more on vertical asymptotes. If, uh, as we're not going to approach infinity, but we're going to approach what instead? Well, we're going to approach, it says, you see it says x equals plus, limit is x equals L from the plus of f of x, and limit as x approaches L from the, from the left of f of x equals plus or minus infinity. Okay, so what it is, you're approaching, you're not approaching infinity. For a horizontal asymptote, you're actually approaching infinity. But for the vertical asymptote, what are you approaching? some number in between negative infinity and positive infinity, right? And so that's one thing we're doing in, in calculus that you didn't do in pre-calculus or algebra two, which we're finding the limits between the infinities, okay? And that's, and vertical asymptotes is how we make that, make that happen, or where we, where we see those limits to infinity. So let's go ahead and look at some examples. Okay. 
uh, one through four below graph and or use the table on your calculator to find okay we have a we're given horizontal asymptote and we'll do that too but we're going to concentrate more on vertical asymptotes how is it how is it that you get a vertical asymptote how can you get a vertical asymptote what does it what does it mean in fact I got vertical asymptote in my shirt right how is it you got a vertical asymptote in this case at x equals 2 how did that happen but how did it happen it just gets closer, 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 closer. What what happens down here in this denominator? That see where the yeah. So you cannot divide by zero, right? And is it dividing by zero? Is that what produces our our ass vertical asymptotes? Yeah, that's what that's what happens. And so you get close. The function is defined close to 2, but not at 2. And so there you have an undefined uh, x value, or in this case, 2. Okay, so this is kind of what we're looking at here. So how do we find what our vertical asymptotes are? And how do, and where do we look for those? In the denominator. We look in the denominator. Okay. So if if you set your denominator equal to zero and you solve for that, are you going to have a x value for a vertical asymptote? Yes, you will, unless unless what? Unless, I'll take you back here. Unless, what happens here? You see what happened here? You can like divide out. Do we have a vertical asymptote? And this, if we graph this thing, would we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 7? No. No, we wouldn't. What would we have there instead? Just a hole. We would have a hole, okay, which would look like this right so here. So if the denominator like a factor of the numerator it just it's just a hole it'll be a hole ah, okay if the denominator is a factor of the numerator you'll just have a hole instead of a asymptote that's fine okay so but let's go ahead and look at these right here uh, let's how would you set find a vertical asymptote for this thing right here factor so let's go ahead and factor this thing. So we'll have a negative, what would a common factor be for this? Negative, negative 3x. Negative 3x, that's what I that's the, what I'd use. So negative 3x times x squared minus 2x. Minus 2x. Minus 8. Okay, and could you, and would you have, so you'd have uh, negative 3x is equal to 0, right? Would you have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0? Yes. You think you would? Okay, we'll, we'll just set that aside. What else could we look at? This thing right here. Now you can factor that. Well, so we'd have, uh, what would that be? X. Plus two and x minus four. X plus two equals zero. X minus four is equal to zero. So we have x equals negative two. X equals four. So these would be all three of these would be what possible equations of vertical asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes. I'm going to put x equals zero. Right. X equals zero. X equals negative two x equals 4. Is there anyone here 
that you know would not qualify as a vertical asymptote? I'll then put it another way. One of those does not qualify as a vertical asymptote. Which one would not qualify as a vertical asymptote? Would it be x equals zero? I think it would be x equals zero. Why is that? Yeah, because because zero is a factor, x is a factor of the top also. So we'd have we'd have a hole right there at x equals zero, right? What about these other guys? What what do we have to do to look at these on top? Factor well, we can factor out. this out and see what we have here, if it's factorable, right? So we'll have two x and x, and what else? Anything else makes sense? Well, of course, x out here, right? And we have minus, we're going to have minus minus, right? So 4 and 1, or 2 and 1. So I'm thinking 4 and 1 here, is that right? Oh, yeah, because of the 2x. Yeah, so we got negative. 8x, negative x plus 4. So we have this. Is there, uh, which, is there a factor that cancels also out of this? Yeah. Yeah, this one here, right? This. One. So what's going to be our only vertical asymptote on this guy here? X equals negative 2. What I want to do, what I want you to do is put that in your calculator and see if that's what you get. It says graph and or use the table in your calculator. See if you get x equals negative 2 in your calculator when you look at it. Gavin, you have your calculator? Whoa. I'm getting it. You're getting it. Let me know if, uh, let me know if you need batteries. Anybody? Oh yeah, I get some batteries, Gavin. Miss Van gave me a gave me a new pack of batteries. Is it at x equals negative two? Yes. Okay. And is uh, and that's the only one you see there. Is that the yes. only vertical asymptote? Yes. Okay, good. Yeah, I see the holes. So you see when you go to table view, you see the holes. Mm -hmm. And yeah, were they right? Did we figure it out right at yeah, four and a zero? Okay, good. So what I found out in calculus class that we learned to do is we learned to do analytically what we could only do with a calculator before. Okay. So now I want you to go ahead and look at number two and see if you can find a vertical asymptote for number two and numbers two and three. Is that the name? Oh hey. Don't worry, I already said it to me. Yeah, go ahead. That's pretty funny. So are, you, to me. so are you doing two and three? Here? What is trans? Trans is, is an equation that we'll be doing later. It's called a transcendental uh, function, which is like either an exponential or logarithmic, usually. It will be a transcendental. Okay, what are, what are the vertical asymptotes here? Well, it looks like. So if we go ahead and add this, we're going to have so x
So x equals three halves. So I want you to put that in your calculator. See if you get a see if you get a vertical asymptote there. And how would you do this last one? You just Shanghai it into. The and then you solve for x, and you'll have you'll have a vertical asymptote. And I don't I don't think there'd be a factor of anything in the numerator. So on this one here, did you find a vertical asymptote at x equals 3 over 2? Um, I don't know, I think I calculated it by funny. And then for this one here, you'd have, you'd have uh, x cubed equals negative 1 eighth. Is that right? And then if you take the cube root of this, x is going to be equal to what? Negative one half. Negative one half. So just check these on your calculator. Make sure you have your vertical asymptotes there. And I think you'll find that they are there. Why well, Just to put this in your calculator, that's all. I'm just trying to... Trying to enlighten you, Gavin. Yeah, trying to have you enlighten yourself. Remember, algebra one is Gordon. That was the time. But it was Gordon. Yeah. Yeah. So they come out, you get your vertical asymptotes yes. where you should get them? Okay.